I'm Rob Lukuria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby, here with Benj Pasek, Justin Paul, Kion Hersey, Sakari Jones and Mark Sonnenblick, who co-wrote three instant classic songs for the Christmas comedy Spirited, which is currently showing in theatres and streaming on Apple TV+. I am beside myself on this movie. It is so much fun. Uh, the songs are amazing. And so the first question I have is a pretty general one, and that's what's the process for a songwriter on a film like this? Director and co-writer um, Sean Anders and co-writer John Morris approach you to write songs, you read the script, and then what? Well, we had the best time coming aboard this. I mean, the idea of doing a Christmas movie musical with Will Ferrell and Ryan Reynolds was like an instant hell yeah for us. Um, it's like such a fun idea and something that also felt so joyful in the middle of, you know, we wrote this all in the middle of a pandemic. And so getting to write something, it was just unmitigated fun and joy. And also with a little bit of like a, you know, heart and, and, and morality to it felt like a, a great opportunity. And then in terms of like collaborating with this crew of writers, I think, you know, we've seen it a lot in, TV writers rooms or in pop music where there's a bunch of folks who are getting to contribute best ideas, but in general in theatrical writing, um, it's much more of a solitary process. And I think Justin and I were excited about just sort of getting to collaborate with some of our favorite theater writers and get everybody in a room and come up with ideas that would be better than the ideas that we could come up with on our own. And so, you know, this, this came up, this came to be like a, a really, really fun collaboration where we would meet um, in the middle, you know, in the in the wee hours of the morning or until the wee hours of the morning on Zoom and on Google Docs and just kind of, kind of like really writing these songs together as a group in a really organic and really, really fun way. Um, and I don't think I've experienced anything quite like it. And I hope to do it again and again and again, um, not only because we're really proud of what we came up with together, but because the process was just so fun. Wow. And like, you would think back in the day, if we were all in a pandemic on Zoom for a couple of years, that creativity would just die. But it's actually not the case, right? Like, I've heard from so many artists and creative people that you kind of have to dig a little deeper because you're not in the room together. And this is this is a really great example of that because the um this musical is going to outlast religion. Like, it's got a lot of beautiful <laughs> songs in it that I think is going to really fly for years to come. And you guys should be really proud of that. So who wants to comment on working via Zoom? Because we're used to it now, but it's still a little weird that we that we still do this. Yeah, I, I mean, what was super awesome about working over Zoom is that um, we could all be in different places. I was in LA, Binge, I think uh, you were in LA, but like Sikari, Mark and Justin were in New York. So uh normally like it wouldn't we wouldn't be able to collaborate um but because of zoom it, it actually all worked out and i also think that um just the the ability to like be in like google docs even and like see people generate things in real time um you know that was incredible just to see how everyone's mind was working and where they were um and i i have a memory of us being in different places of the google doc and just eat, each working on our own and then we would like show each other but we could always see what the other was working on so i think the technology um actually made this uh an incredible experience zoom google docs etc yeah yeah and like we didn't even write lines together like by the time you're done writing a line somebody's coming in right after you with the rhyme to it <laughs> like it sort of in a certain way can like even make you work uh, better or just at least like uh, j there, there's just so many more flavors coming to it instantly it's also for me as like most writers I think most songwriters are often many songwriters are like you know we sort of hate ourselves and love ourselves at the same time it's that beautiful balance of like self-hatred and cocky confidence to think we can write something but like for me what I love is we can be working like this and then I can press a mute and I can work on something and you can't <laughs> hear it but then when I'm like wait I think I want to share this unmute play it. What do you guys think? And it's, a, it's an instant feedback of this amazing team of writers. And we all can say, that's good. But also what about this? Or we like, it's just sort of the best world of both worlds where you can work on your own and come up with something, but then you throw it in the Google doc. And the, the next thing you know, someone else is coming in, chiming in with a new line. Um, and it was this beautifully sort of symbiotic thing where everybody here was contributing to like every single line. There are lines that are broken up in parts where like, you know, somebody's working on the end rhyme and someone else is giving uh, options for the interior rhyme of the line. 
And, you know, what came out of it was something greater than any of us would have created on our own. That's so cool. Thank you to the IT nerds back in the day who created these technologies to allow us <laughs> to be so creative in our own homes, in like, you know, on a day when you're not even wearing pants and you can create something like this. Exactly. So the thought, the five of you co-wrote Good Afternoon as well as The View From Here and The Story of Your Life. Um, I want to talk a little bit about Good Afternoon because I love that um, song. And as a member of the Commonwealth, I do agree that these two words can change your tune. Good afternoon can actually kind of change the vibe of the room. Um, it's so funny. It's such a funny song. You've got Will Ferrell and um, Ryan Reynolds singing. And then you get a cameo from Jane Judy Dench. So I really want, need to know how that happened because I was taken aback. I wasn't expecting that. Sakari. Sakari, <laughs> take it away. Is, uh... Sakari it Dench. It had to be. Um, <laughs> sculptor is chipping away at what inevitably must become an earth. No, it was just fun. Like uh, Kion was saying, we all worked on the Google Doc and we're throwing out ideas. Some of them were, you know, too brilliant to be denied, such as the Judy Dent reference. And um, yeah, some, some yang, some neighing, and then um, kind of ruling by hive mind um friends it's kind of like if you had a slumber party but like for some reason you also were creating something as part of it that's kind of what the vibe was like um and then a song lyric uh, was there when the dust cleared i love it <laughs> yeah and I, just yeah, to say like oh go ahead mark go 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 for it i could absolutely not muting myself ah. <laughs> all right i'll, I'll save you you were say something really really terrible uh so i'll uh i'll say something kind of like mediocre but um it'll be better than you embarrassing all of us right now uh we um i think uh, like in in the way sakari is saying like ideas come up ideas are rejected like another story you know this this google doc that we that we worked on is probably um i think counting the other day it's like 40 two pages or something of brainstorms of lyrics uh that then ultimately you know the the song itself i think is like two and a half three pages dense i mean something like this it's like a you know you what's great about writing for theater and getting to write a movie like this that is so theatrical characters singing in the scene uh landing jokes as their characters it's not like um it, although those these other kind of songs are fun too it's not like the back of a montage or something to set a mood or or you know being sung by an artist but the you know as, the, as you're watching the characters on screen this is sung by the characters there's a lot of limitations it has to sound like will it has to sound like ryan and their characters it needs to fit the situation and so as we work through the brainstorms there's like you know there's the sort of 10 different things we have to hit it's not only telling the story it's not only the characters but because it's musical theater, you have to be able to understand the lines, the syllables, the rhymes, the internal kind of work that, you know, the, the way that we're saying, just being able to tag team that and then ultimately narrow it down to what makes it on screen as part of the joy. And so getting to do that as a group, you know, whether it's in the room or in this case on a doc, uh, it actually works pretty well because the limitations help guide you as you're putting it together. And I think we're just really proud of, of how a song like this turns out and seems hopefully effortless and fun, but like then we're like, you know, we we got we got all those cut lines that are terrible that we'll never see the light of day. Yeah, but that's 41, what it takes to, 41 to get other to. pages, exactly. <laughs> wow. It yeah. does feel effortless. Like I guess that's a compliment. Um, but you know, some of the best movie songs are the ones that are sung by like Celine Dion or Lady Gaga over the credits. They're awesome. But um most film nerds like myself. I just crave the songs that are in the in the actual film and it could be a musical theater type style film like this or it could just be any film where then you know a song is sung um either by a character or by someone over you know with a voiceover and they're really special because they propel the narrative and they add to the emotion of the scene like nothing else can not even a score can do what a song can do do you all agree that in this day and age movie songs are never really going to go out of fashion that they are very important to the narrative and they have to be because otherwise you're all going to be you know you have to find a different job 
I mean, I, don't know. I gotta say, I think that even like now more than ever, and I think it's because, you know, like young people on TikTok are, they're doing the same thing, right? They're using yeah. music to propel narrative and to tell elements of who they are and to share elements of their own stories. And music, I think, is being used in a narrative device more than ever. So in long form narrative, like in movies, the fact that we get to do that for characters in a situation, and it's not just an emotional beat, like what you would get in a score, but it really is a, a, a person articulating what they're thinking and that it is i mean in the case of capital m musical it, it's not just even a song in a, in a in a moment to feel emotional but it is literally a character trying to achieve something within the the the, the element of the story which makes it so necessary to plot and like honestly if you took it out the same plot wouldn't happen i think that's the stuff that feels like the most of our roots you know we all come from the theater we all come from you know, we're all musical theater and theater nerds. Most of us, you know, have spent a lot of time in New York and and just trying to get our shows, you know, off Broadway and all of that kind of stuff. So like really th that's where we come from and, and getting to do that for something on screen, which we know that that's a rare opportunity to have characters literally break out in a song and have it be an extension of story is the best. So I hope, you know, I do hope that it is something that, it, it, you know, is around for a very, very long time because nothing is like it. Um, and, you know, I, I hope that because, you know, we grew up, Everybody on this call, I think we grew up with like The Little Mermaid was the first movie I ever saw in a movie theater, right? Like Ariel talking about what she wants, you know, in song. I will remember that for the rest of my life. And I was four when I went to go see that to be able to be a part of that, you know, be a part of that tradition and get to write songs for characters in movies, like the greatest joy in the world. So hopefully it'll it'll keep happening. And um, and Spirited gets to be a, a little part of that legacy. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, and no disrespect to songwriters, but sometimes you you do watch movie musicals and when they start to break in a song and you're like, oh, really? Like, this is this is not great. But thankfully, <laughs> that is not the case for Spirited and it's not the case for all of you. Um, Kion, I'm curious, given we're talking about musical theatre and how it has a, such a special place in our culture because of the way it uniquely blends like singing, dancing and acting, nothing else is quite like it. I know this for a fact. I have children who do it uh, and we've been watching it ever since we were born. Um, so what most excites you though about the art form and then how it's informed your work on a project like this where you're doing a film? Yeah, I mean, like, I think what was uh, amazing about this one is is the the, the collision of musical theater and, and film. Uh, notably, this uh, film has reprises um, so like there's, yeah. we hear the view from here three times. Um, so it, I, it was really fun to get to, uh, use that really traditional, uh, craft of musical theater writing and, and plop it in a film. And we don't really see that uh, too much in, in movie musicals. So, so that was, uh, something really exciting as well. And also just to, to have, uh, Will Ferrell, Ryan Reynolds singing, um, and they actually sound incredible to like actually have them uh, join that musical theater tradition was uh, amazing as well. Yeah. yeah I so ahead. agree. And I think like having, having Ryan, like, you know, Ryan Reynolds is like an ambassador of like, you know, all these like brands basically, you know what I mean? It's like, he'll tell you Met Mobile and Aviation Jet, like he's incredible that way. Like, I feel so happy that Ryan Reynolds is also now an ambassador of like musical theater. Like that's an amazing thing that now exists in our world, that he is actually an ambassador of like, song and dance, telling songs through story, taking an iconic image and marrying it to hopefully a memorable song and in, and having it sort of indelibly etched into the hearts and minds of a new generation of movie mo moviegoers. Um, it's like, I think we can't underestimate how powerful that is. And we as musical theater, sort of like through and through songwriters and, and musical theater kids growing up, um, it's a huge deal. Um, so I feel really grateful to have been a part of it. And I'm just grateful that it exists in the world. Yeah, totally. Um, I think we are reminded that Will Ferrell and Ryan Reynolds are like some of the greatest performers of all time. Will Ferrell is a comedic genius and he can sing. If you have you know, go and watch, you know, yeah. the, uh, the Icelandic Eurovision movie. Exactly. And, uh, like <laughs> amazing. And Ryan Reynolds is a superstar and can do everything. And he's so funny and so talented. So Spirited is a great way to kind of lean into that. Um we're running out of time, so I want to move on to Sakari. Um, you've collaborated with Benj and Justin on Tracy Older's Amazon comedy Harlem, which I love, and I've spoken to Tracy about that show. It's a great show. So let's get deep. And our whole Sorry? live, bud, but yeah. 
Yes. What do you most value? I said, and our whole lives with Best Buds. We go back. Oh, really? Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, she is, she's like next <laughs> level talented. So good. Um, what do you, I want to get deep for a second. What do you most value then about partnering with Benjamin and Justin on a project like Spirited? Because this is like, you know, the big leagues, the big movie for Apple. Oh, Talk to Hated because they hate getting affirmation. Um, <laughs> ben and Justin may or may not know, but I was really floundering um, in the world of musical theater. Um, I'm extremely ambitious. I'm highly intelligent, and I have great original ideas. But I was really stuck. Um, my agent was like, um, "Later for you." My client was like, "These ideas are impossible. They're impossible theater. Later for you." And I was kind of in a place where I thought well maybe there's no space for kind of a black woman with ambitious ideas that kind of wants to change the art form a bit and necessarily center brown bodies in space as three-dimensional trope-free beings um and I was like well that was dumb I guess you shouldn't have dared to dream and then literally like four days after this existential crisis Ben and Justin were like hey um we're just chilling are you Chillin, what are you doing? Do you want to do this project? So this project was fun, but also life affirming because it kind of saved my life. Much like Kimberly in the film, I was trapped in this um, suffocating glass, no um, holes cut out for air box. And um, through kind of working on this, I saw that it's possible to succeed best um, through chasing joy and kind of daring to be hokey enough to hope. Um, so I'm so sorry for you guys, but I, I think Benj and Justin saved my life with letting us all work together. Um, yeah, this film pulled me out of a terrible day job, a life of really prioritizing misery as productivity and really set me back on the path for believing in just like change and the possibility of dreams. Oh my God. That's the answer you got. I'm sorry I... for you never get disappointed by songwriters and writers when they answer questions like that because you're not afraid to go deep and that was so perfect. there's just a lot of unheard of things that went into this process first of all possibly the most successful musical theater team working today <laughs> decides that they want to share the wealth literally and figuratively with um creating something that process doesn't happen that's something that's being pioneered um deciding to write characters that lots of us don't get to see mirrors of ourselves on screen that's something that's being pioneered here so just um a lot of miracles a lot of uh holiday miracles happening in and out of the movie i love it i love it um mark i also want to go slightly deep for you because you've got some experience writing for visual media uh, you've received an emmy nomination for your work on song of parkland um and it was it just made me think so you're back on uh, a film so it's a film not a tv show but it's a similar type situation what's what do you most love or value about writing for film and tv because it is a slightly different proposition than just writing songs in general uh yeah yeah well i i think one one thing that is true across any project whether it's theater for film or TV is that every project is very, very different. And what, what's exciting is it comes out of, uh, you know, your songwriting for uh, whether it's, a, even when it's not a story, although it's often a story, your songwriting for a function, it's doing something, it's contributing to uh, whatever the, that piece of media is. And that in a fun way means you get to collaborate. Uh, sometimes you're lucky and you get to collaborate with uh, other amazing songwriters um, who make you better and who uh, push you to write in different ways. Uh, but on a base level, you're collaborating with another storyteller, a filmmaker, um, an actor. Uh, if, if you're on stage, you're collaborating with the designers, you're collaborating, collaborating with the choreographer, the orchestrator. Um, and uh, what's exciting is and there, there are differences between film and TV, uh, but that collaboration is always, I think, what what drives me and maybe all of us. It's not, not that you don't collaborate if you're in a band or if you're making a song in isolation, but to know that you are going to be able to contribute to somebody else's vision or have them push your vision is something that's kind of true across everything. So the fact that with Spirited, not only were we collaborating with each other, but 
uh, with Sean, with John, with Chloe, with all of the geniuses, with Ian, um, who's our executive music producer, who is also a genius, Dave Metzger, who does the amazing orchestrations and arrangements. Um, what you see up, you know, that's why there's one, one thing I love about this movie is they put a song over the entire, yeah, a song that, you know, is an amazing song that Benjamin and Justin wrote, but they, they cut it from the story, but they leave it in over the credits. And as you're watching that song, you know, hope, hopefully you also see the number of people who contribute to this movie. It's astonishing. And uh, to be a part of that and to know that you have just one contribution, um, but to, to show up and I was, we were just talking about this. One of the most moving moments was showing up to set the first day we got to go, which was uh, for the moment when um, Will and Octavia, they, they sing like a love duet as they're walking along the river. And that was the first time all of us had actually met in person. Some of us had met like <laughs> individually, but the five of us in one place yeah. long after the writing was done. Um, and that was powerful to begin with. But then on top of that, to be on set with so many other people who are the best people in the world at their jobs, bringing such care uh, to the story. And again, like this is not something we could make in our room that then is going to we're going to deliver the the audio and it's going to play over the sequence or we got to cut it to whatever uh that's an incredible incredible skill and that is also really really fun um in a different way but to get to show up on set and have them singing live lip syncing to the pre-record for for the ensemble stuff the stuff that we had to do ahead of time that technical skill that everybody involved uh, had to bring to uh, bring the story and, and the song to life was incredibly moving to watch. And you just feel so lucky that you, you it's like we're pinching ourselves. How does this happen? Um, and, uh, you know, that's something that no matter what the project is, no matter what the, the medium is, yeah. your collaborators, I, at least for me, are what's like, wow, how, how did I get in the room with these people? I can uh, imagine. That. It's that collectivity uh, that brings this art form to life. There's nothing quite like it. Uh, I have kind of run out of time, but I won't. I can't let you go until I just ask Benj and Justin one final question because, um, you know, The Greatest Showman's one of the greatest albums of all time. It's best-selling album for 2018. I can't describe how profoundly significant that album is to me and my family. We listen. We know every line off my heart. Um, but going even further back, when you won the Oscar for City of Stars, um, I I just remember um, one of you dedicated it to um, the the um, parents letting kids sing in the rain, something like that. It was a really beautiful moment. Um, talk me, can you just recall what was the most fun moment from getting up on that stage with Justin Hurwitz and winning that Oscar? I mean. One of the it was an interesting years. night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, like like life, like La La Land, some highs and lows. You know, you never know. Yeah, take the good with the bad. We'll never forget that. Never forget that. Um, but no, it's like I mean, I I I got to get, say this uh, that line about just like that. My mom let me, I think, quit the JCC soccer league That's to right. school musical. You know, so like for all the kids who sing in the rain and all the moms who let them. And I like, my mom was there, you know, my mom was just there as my Oscar date and just like, you know, the, and like the camera caught her just like standing up. She didn't know I was going to reference her. So I don't know. I think that there's something really beautiful about the parental figures in your life who allow you to, you know, believe in yourself before you know how to believe in yourself, right. Who give you the permission to dream. And as corny as it is, what is so common, I think about musicals um, is that they are, they can be they can be intellectually rigorous and 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 provocative but they can also be really joy filled and they can be really really encouraging and you know when whether you have somebody in your life who is encouraging a song can play that role and it can be something that can remind you almost like an affirmation um you know to 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 believe in something bigger than yourself or guide you towards or understand some element of yourself in a way that you might not have been able to and and you can play it again and again and again and it can sort of soothe um and inspire and point and and be a lighthouse in in a, in a dark dark world so you know i don't know i love this art form and um and i love that that people get let us be a part of it and let us make songs and let us pair them with beautiful visuals and that it's something that is you know, is is happening right now in popular culture that folks that movie stars like Ryan Reynolds um, and Will Ferrell and Octavia Spencer want to um, 
take a risk and do something that they've never done before and risk being, you know, laughed at or ridiculed, but like they're not because it's so full of heart and it's so genuine the place that it comes from. And I think that that really, really emanates from their performances on screen and, and it's permission giving, not only for other folks to follow that lead, but for other people to just lead with their hearts. And, um, you know, Sakari was saying earlier today in, a, in another interview about, you know, that, that not everything has to be ironic and that actually joy can be cool. Um, and I'm really inspired by that. I think that joy and and not mitigating joy um, is something really to be celebrated. And uh, while it's corny and while it's Christmas and while it's a musical, like, yeah, all of that is part of it. So anyway, the Oscar thing and all of that is just like, I, I, I love that that this kind of um, art form um, and this hard on sleeve approach can be celebrated. And that's something that I'm, I'm really happy to be a, a little part of. Totally agree. Thank you so much, everyone, for your time today. It's a real pleasure um, going watching this film and listening to your music and talking to you guys about it today. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, so much Robert.